Back into the wide receiver rankings we go. But look, once you're out of that top ranking range, it gets a little bit more difficult. What are we doing with Julio Jones? What are we doing with DJ Moore? Stay tuned. You're going to find out, hear about all of our differences. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like this video. And make sure you enjoy the show. I have a question for you. Oh, then I probably have an answer. Do you have your ultimate draft kit for 2021? Not only do I have one, I helped make it. <laughs> Listen, before we start today's show, I want to remind you about the ultimate draft kit, the number one tool resource to get ready for your draft. This has been one of the most proven methods to uh, outwit your opponent on draft day. And we're really excited to be partnering with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital again this year. One dollar of every UDK sold goes directly to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital and supports their mission. You can learn more about the Ultimate Draft Kit and get ready for your draft at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. <laughs> that plane didn't even have a chance to take off. It just got a little off the ground and right back down. Just It was just a little bump. <laughs> it's going to be a special day. Tuesday, August 10th. Welcome into the show. I'm a little raspy today. I don't know what happened to the voice. But... Maybe I sang happy birthday to my son a little too loud this morning. Oh, you a really rambunctious round of happy birthday? It's yeah. A, it's a big one. I mean, not only. I did it more like opera style. Oh, oh really? Okay. Yeah. Happy Can we hear it? Bird. Well, that's not opera. <laughs> <laughs> that was a whale. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's a golden birthday. How you doing, Brooks? Yeah, it is. He's 10 years old today. There you go. Doing great. Um, Brooks is 10 years old? Brooks just turned 10. Is this legal <laughs> for you to be working? Not if we don't pay you. Oh. And we don't need to pay you. You're the richest man alive. Uh, to, which we are now, Brooks. I, you'll be happy to know. We did an AMA on Reddit yesterday. And your wealth has become a topic of conversation. Because for some people, it was a foregone conclusion you were the wealthiest one here by a lot, which is fair because you are. Um, but they wanted to know, like, how you got your wealth, <laughs> how you made your first hundred and fifty million. Um apparently you used to run a, a business. Yeah, the, you remember we all worked together at uh, his his business. The tech the tech <laughs> business. So But I'm not gonna share any other secrets. Right, not. right. And you, you are but to be clear, you're responsible for the creation of Facebook, right? Uh yeah. Okay. yeah. When, Something like that. When you were wealthy that that young, right? Like Brooks, you know how many times he said no to the to the like the Forbes under forty articles and like the, the keep a low profile. Yeah, the, the twelve under twelve yeah. is yeah, it's it's an elite it's, company. <laughs> we the have, world's youngest self made millionaire. That's right, twelve. It, it was Brooks. Um, where there's smoke, there's fire. On the show today, we're looking at some of the camp stories, the hype. Yeah. I mean, there's so much to talk about. NFL news to get into. And then today's show is wide receiver rankings part two. So we got it. We had the top 10 on yesterday's show. And today we're getting into some of the, what is it? Probably 11 through maybe 25, 20 to 25. And well, I'm sure we'll have more debates on today's show, less consensus, opinions. Yeah, I mean, it, all the players we're talking about today, they have a much wider range of outcomes. And when you're in your drafts, I mean, we all know who the best wide receivers are. And if you grab one or the other, they're all good. But I think the wide receivers we cover today, these are the guys where you're, you're going to make the decision, I don't like this player, or I do. And, and you're, you know, you're, it's, it's less about where you are in the draft, you know, because if you want Devontae Adams and you've got the first pick in the draft, he's not... He's not available for you right? because he's near the 1-2 the turn. He's on the other side of the draft. But the, these guys we're talking about today, you're going to get the decision on, on all of them. You can follow the show on Twitter at the FF Ballers, YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. And the ultimate draft kit is ultimate draft where 
where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. All right, three stories today where we're asking basically, is there something to this story or is it just smoke? Number one. Number uh, one. I've seen quite a bit of this. Uh, The Athletics, Matthew Fairburn reporting, Zach Moss has consistently been the best running back at Bill's camp. So the question is, does this matter? Will he take over that starting running back role in a way that is meaningful for fantasy players? Uh, Because technically, Devin Singletary did start every game last year. I I don't think we felt that way. Yeah, but I mean that it, was the truth. It was it was a pretty even split when they were healthy and and uh it's the opposite of what happened with the Ravens passing game, right? The Ravens passing game, Marquise Hollywood Brown was pretty good for what the passing game was. If you look at market share, uh, touchdown share, fantasy points share of the passing game, the problem is it just wasn't that much. So when you have a good amount of a of a tiny pie, it's uh, unsatisfying and <laughs> And so, yeah, I mean, not only were they splitting it pretty 50-50 last year, but then it was, there wasn't much to go around. Everything was the passing game. Everything was Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs. We talked about uh, that a little bit yesterday. Now the question is, will Zach Moss be able to be relevant for fantasy? The news is he's the guy. And I I smell delicious smoke. Oh. But that's all it is to me. This mm. is just smoke. This is – look, uh, it doesn't matter if he's the best guy – in the running back room, in in my opinion, unless they're going to change the core of who they are and he's going to get all of it. I think this is just camp smoke that is going to end up being mostly meaningless. I'm with you. It's rare to have a, a great offense, have two guys drafted this late. You know, their running back room is 808 and 1010. Um, last year, they combined for one top 12 weekly finish. Ooh. So... That's Combined. not good. Wow. And I, I feel like two things have to happen for this to be fire. Number one, they have to give a higher proportion of their offense to the running game, mm-hmm. which I don't think happens. Number two, they have to, for some reason, stop running the ball into the end zone with their quarterback around the goal line, which I don't think happens. So uh, smoke for me. It's... Uh, I I don't think it's just smoke that he's the best running back at camp. Like that's fine, but I'm with you guys that I don't see a world where Zach Moss gets the volume. Like last year, the the highest opportunities that he saw in a single game was that was week eight when he had when he was top five against New England. He had 15 opportunities. He was great on the ground, but he had it. He had also had two rushing touchdowns. I mean, so a guy had. 14 carries, two rushing touchdowns, and was the running back five. Like, he doesn't get enough work. Look at the targets. He averages essentially one target a game. Devin Singletary is is a, is a good complimentary back, and I don't see – I don't see a full transition of that offense going from – away from Josh Allen, the man who just got the bag, to let's feature Zach Moss. Well, it's funny because if Singletary was the – "Quote unquote starter last year, which now Moss is. Yeah, there were lots of games where Moss was more relevant than Singletary. So that order doesn't matter to me that much. Number two, Brian Edwards has consistently run with the first team offense ahead of John Brown at camp. Henry Ruggs on the other side. The Raiders offense, smoke or fire. Brian Edwards, a sleeper pick in redraft leagues. You know, I believe it's fire. Oh, I, really? I, you I do believe that? Because." I believe that Brian Edwards... I can't even see through all this smoke. Yeah, I, and I understand. But Brian Edwards is, in my opinion, a good wide receiver. He is... Why? Because I've watched the tape of him play. I, like his, his opportunities were very minimal last year. The guy was, was frequently hurt. And I get... Like the the our one shot of really seeing Brian Edwards do anything was the first couple weeks, and granted, nothing happened in there. But to me, watching the tape of Brian Edwards, he is a good player. He has the physical attributes to be a top wide receiver. The fact that he's running ahead of John Brown is extremely extremely interesting to me. I th- I think we all figured the signing of John Brown was well, he's going to come in, he'll replace Nelson Aguilar. 
uh, immediately, and the fact that he still has not, uh, like this team is is in on Brian Edwards and Henry Ruggs. Brian Edwards was a third round pick just two years ago. Yeah, I mean, I I I remember. I'm old enough to remember all the smoke about Brian Edwards last year about how great yeah. he was, how awesome he was. And unfortunately, he got injured. It was a lost rookie season, or at least that's how it feels. But he played he, weeks 9 through 17. Yeah, he only missed four games. Yeah. And he had 193 receiving yards. 15 if, total targets on the year. If there is someone with a lot of smokers around, it's Gruden. I mean, that dude, I'm sure he can see. I yes. mean, he can create an absolute smoke fest, but I don't think there's any fire going on here. I brought up the other day, wide receiver twos for the amazing Kansas City offense have no hope to produce for fantasy. I certainly don't believe that the wide receiver two in Los Angeles with, or I'm sorry, in Las Vegas with Darren Waller and Ruggs being by far the, and Renfro there too. Like, well, after you I said just, that, I, I don't buy anything. After you brought that up, our editor, uh, the Borgogan, went and did some research to see if these tight ends that are the you know one of the leading uh, targets on their roster does that impact the wide receivers and it sure does you don't have a wide receiver to uh, mean a lot when you've got a tight end taking that much target volume and 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 this is a guaranteed roster that I, I think Mike's, Darren Waller over, Mike's over in the corner and he's got the flint out and he's trying to get this thing lit he's been trying to light this fire for two years good luck to well, you this is only the second year Two years. Okay, well, here, you're over – like, yes, I agree. If he's the wide receiver, too, in target volume behind Henry Ruggs, then, yeah, he will not have fantasy value. I don't think it's – you could say it's locked. It's a sure thing that Henry he's, Ruggs is actually – the will be the, the, the wide receiver one. Isn't it more likely that Renfro has higher target volume than Brian Edwards, too? Not necessarily. Okay. Number three, Jamar Chase. Some reports came out. Um I guess you could say in general, Bengals camp reports have not been positive on the no, offensive side not. of the ball. Uh, the quote from uh, Paul Dinner Jr. You can see somebody tentatively getting used to a new offense, new league, and not playing football since 2020. Has not shown much in terms of separation as you'd hope. Contested balls haven't gone his way much. Smoke or fire for Jamar Chase. I kind uh, of laugh when I hear you hear somebody getting used to a new offense about the rookie. Yeah. That seems like a real spot on analysis <laughs> there. Can Nail I apply that nailed to it. every rookie in all the football? But go ahead, Jay. Um yeah, I mean, look, for me if if you go back to the pre-NFL draft, uh, you know, rookie scouting, I was not as high on Jamar Chase. I was not there for that episode. You guys had to speak for me if I remember. Um but you know, he wasn't he wasn't my wide receiver one, he wasn't my wide receiver two, and my issues were I wondered how much separation he's going to get at this level and whether he can have all the contested success against NFL corners. So to me, I don't know if this is just uh, confirmation bias, um, but I see some flames. And for a rookie who is going to, you know, just historically all rookie wide receivers, they take a while to get going. And so this is someone who's being drafted so I mean, you're drafting him as a as a locked in starter on your roster from week one, and there's there's too much fire here for me w uh, confirming the biases I saw in film. It's smoke for me. I don't mind him as a f late fifth round pick. I mean, he's wide receiver twenty five off the board right now with tremendous upside. I I do think people in general are probably discounting Tyler Boyd too much. Sure, because that is the more convenient thing to do when you have youth and unknown ceiling with a Higgins or with Chase, and then you just have this kind of Anquan Bolden-esque consistency with Tyler Boyd, probably stupid to ignore him. Like, he probably belongs above Higgins in our view. Uh, no, I, I would have Higgins above Boyd. I, I don't disagree with you that people, we may be overlooking Tyler Boyd, but the reason we're doing that for fantasy is he is he's locked in. He's the slot wide receiver. And if like Tyler Boyd's ceiling to me on the year with having to deal with T Higgins and Jamar Chase who we know Higgins is good, I'm still projecting that Jamar Chase despite this report here, I'm still uh projecting him to be a 
a good wide receiver. I mean, the touchdown upside for Tyler Boyd is is way down when you have two monsters on the outside. If you had to bet your house on the most total receptions in Cincinnati, wouldn't you bet it on Tyler Boyd? Yeah, you would, but those are, you know, short to the line of scrimmage. I mean, he he, he was, uh, you know, a, a highly targeted guy last year um, and had 841 yards. So, granted, they lost Burrow um, towards the end of the season, but I, I do think – uh, in a PPR league, he's fine, but outside of that, he just doesn't do much on a per-target basis. So if you're getting a point for every reception, great. If, otherwise, I, I do think his his ceiling to me is like wide receiver 24. All right, um, which is right around where Jamar Chase is being drafted right now. My concerns are more with Burrow returning. Sure. Like you, you talk about tentativeness, I mean – that's been the report at camp is that Burrow some days looks okay, some days looks like he's protecting himself. That's to be expected. I don't think anybody should freak out about that with the injury that he took place. Like, I don't know if anybody's come back from that injury and on day one felt like, boy, I'm just the same player I was. Yes. Probably takes some time to get acclimated. The physical game, the mental game, being able to trust your body again. And it's, it, it is mentioned in this quote about Jamar Chase. But the guy hasn't played an actual high level uh, against high level competition in a very long time. Like he opted out last year for his his final college season. He opted out for the for COVID. Was still a, able to be a high NFL draft pick. But it's gonna it's gonna take some time here for Chase to acclimate. So for I think like in redraft at the back of the fifth round. I'm I'm fine with it because I th of what Jamar Chase will become to me, but it, I think Jason's right that it's going to take a while, and you might be sad with your uh, with your draft pick investment would, would for the first couple couple would, weeks. Are you saying you hope, let's say, the end of the year he's like as good as Tyler Lockett, or as good as Deontay Johnson, or these guys that are being drafted right by him? Who yeah, don't well, have to be good in the second I'm, half of the year. You know I'm I'm far in more in on Tyler Lockett than Jamar Chase, but if you're like Deontay Johnson, that's that's a good name to bring up. Love Deontay Johnson. Think he's an excellent fantasy player. But if Jamar Chase hits, I think his ceiling is higher than what Deontay would do. Might be a little bit of team construction at the end of that fifth round. If you need to lean on those picks because you've invested running back, running back, tight end, or you've gone early quarterback. You probably want to pass on Chase and right. sliding him into your lineup in week one. And it's a good point. Like, I'd rather have Deontay Johnson than I would Jamar Chase. So, sure. Uh, maybe that ADP is creeping up too high. That was Where There's Smoke, There's Fire, presented by Traeger Grills. Oh, man. I traded last night. You triggered? I, I did. Well, a couple bergs. Mm. Couple Delicious. Bergs? Couple did, bergs. Did you trigger for yourself or for your family? Well, the, the family benefited. Okay. You from, know what I've never from done? From my hustle. <laughs> I've never done an at-home double patty burger. You what? What an idiot! What? What an idiot! How have you never double patty? I, I don't know. I just you get the you get the burger and you put it on the bun and you you make your fixings. But what, that's dumb. What house of rules are you living in? Oh man! You can't double burger at I, home. I can now that I've made the. <laughs> <laughs> the realization of this tragic mistake. Yeah, you just take mm, one patty and you steak. put it on the other one. Uh, put a you ever Traeger... put a steak on your burger? Mm. <laughs> you can do that. You can do anything you want. Uh, put a Traeger wood pellet grill in your starting lineup and make every game day more delicious. Head to Traeger.com slash footballers to discover how simple wood-fired cooking can be. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right, I'm going to blitz the news here because I want to get to our... This is just an injury report. ...wide receiver rankings. Yeah, just some updates. Saquon has been activated from the reserve PUP Activate. list. He's just doing individual drills, still TBD on start of the season availability. Adam Schefter reporting that Hunter Henry's shoulder injury, not severe, will miss a couple weeks. It's a couple weeks till the season. TBD. Aaron Jones missed practice, camstring injury. Oh, you hoo hoo Stephon Diggs, knee injury, missed practice. No other report on that, Brooksy? You got anything else? Nothing yet. Give him a call, will you? Uh, DeAndre Swift has missed, quote, significant practice time nursing a sore groin. Ah! <laughs> My groin. Uh, uh. 
Ugh. Camp strings, Ugh. camp groins. Uh, you normally need an antibiotic to get rid of camp groin, by the way. Yeah. Jam um, Jamar Jefferson, uh, their, their rookie, uh, has also um, been dealing with injuries. So Jamal Williams is at the very least getting a lot of work right now. Well, don't worry, though, because Tyrell Williams, Brashad Perryman, Quintez Cephas, and Damian Ratley are all missing time as well. Their hey. entire wide receiver room. Tyrell was back. Uh, on Monday, Tyrell returned. He was a groin dislocated finger combination, uh, but they've had a beat up wide receiver room. And maybe the biggest story. Maybe it's because of all the <laughs> Dan Campbell. Evaluate your practice techniques, maybe. Oh, bite me, oh yeah. stop it. It's not his fault. Everybody gets hurt. Uh, Ravens rookie wide receiver Rashad Bateman yeah. limped off the field early on Tuesday. That happened moments ago. Sounded scary the way that it yeah, was Yeah, it didn't reported. sound like a minor thing, at least. But as of this moment, we don't know any more details as to how significant that is. But the Lizard King, cold oh. blooded. he is cold-blooded, and Sammy Watkins is available <sighs> for week one. Well, so Hollywood's beat up, right? Yep. And Bateman's now hurt. Mm-hmm. Maybe J.K. Dobbins will catch the ball. Maybe. Yeah, we were talking about that yesterday. Maybe yeah, There's a greater than 0% chance that they involve him in the passing game in the offense. If that were to happen, he will be a great value because uh, that's the big worry about him right now. And involvement in the passing game on that kind of a inefficient offense might just mean like what Ingram did a few years ago, which was he scored a lot in the passing game. He made well, what he Ingram had, did is impossible. It was he like, had five, like five receiving yeah, touchdowns on like 20 targets. It was absurd. Yeah, I remember the efficiency was crazy, but those type of things can still happen and be added to a nice rushing baseline. So it's not impossible there. Uh, that was today's news and notes brought to you as always by our friends at Sleeper, the largest dynasty platform in the world. Uh, just had some friends start up a new league over on Sleeper this morning, actually. Um, and Dynasty is so fun. You just stay yep. connected all year long, so check that out. Before we jump into the wide receiver rankings part two, I want to thank today's sponsor, Simply Safe. When Simply Safe Home Security's founders Chad and Eleanor Lawrence designed their first security system in their kitchen, they did it for a very personal reason. Their friend had just had their home broken into, and they were struggling to find a security system that was simple to set up and make them feel safe again, so they did it themselves. That is how you do it. Chad and Eleanor getting it done. Making people feel safe is what Simply Safe has been doing ever since that moment 15 years ago. It was a passion project to protect people. Uh, not only drives every engineering detail in its products, but it motivates every interaction with its customers. Simply Safe has been protecting our studio, our important things. It always protects Brooks Vault. His Faberge eggs. Yeah, like he came in, he was smelling like the vault. He did a little, uh, little gold swim, and he knew he was safe. If when simply he left. safe is good enough for Brooks. Yes, it's good enough for you for sure. Absolutely. And check this out. Uh, as listeners of the Fantasy Footballers, you can save twenty percent on your Simply Safe security system and get your first month free when you sign up for interactive monitoring service. Just visit simplysafe.com/footballers. To customize your system and start protecting your home and family, that's simplysafe.com slash footballers. And we want to thank Head and Shoulders for never not working. Oh, never. Because Head and Shoulders never not scalp working. shield technology is never not working to give you 100% dandruff protection even between washes. You know who else is never not working, fellas? Uh, us. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Us. We're Excellent. never not working. In fact, we are going to have a never not working segment on Thursdays here coming up where we are going to give you tips, tricks, ways to outwork, outclass your stupid opponents. Yes. Uh, because we are never not working. Because they're never working. They're never working. And we're, we're never, never not, not working. working. That's right. Head and shoulders scalp shield works day and night to protect you against flakes. You don't want flakes. You can get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with head and shoulders scalp shield technology, which is available at Walmart. And shout out. Oh, yeah. Pittsburgh Steelers. The Hall of Fame has some hair. It's, it's got luscious locks. The most beautiful hair of all time, which he protects it with head and shoulders. Troy, I saw a uh, poll. Eisen put up a poll between Edron James, uh, Troy Polamalu, 
It's it, Paul Amalu oh, in, Paul the, in Am- that situation. Well, he did dominate because <laughs> when you got hair like that, Hall of Fame hair. Imagine getting pitted against Troy's hair. Yeah, it's not fair. Imagine you getting pitted against him. Ooh, that's, <laughs> that's a beatdown. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Wide receivers. All right, part two of the wide receiver ranking show. These are our consensus half point PPR rankings yesterday. We did the top 10. That was Adams, Hill, Diggs, Ridley, Hopkins, Jefferson, Metcalf, Robinson, Allen, and A.J. Brown. Number 11, Terry McLaurin um, being drafted as the wide receiver 10. So there was a point this offseason where every time I looked at where we had Terry McLaurin, I winced a little bit. Um, I kind of, you know, you when certain players, they get ranked around where they finished. Other players get ranked where you hope they're going to take a leap, right? There are two type of two types of situations here. McLaurin is a leap, right? He hasn't been inside the top 12 to finish the season yet. He has flashed from week to week. He dealt with injury last year. I know that if you grab a certain amount of weeks last year, he was in contention for this kind of a finish. Yeah, weeks one through nine. Right, weeks one through nine. But you still, um, you know, haven't seen that complete comprehensive season yet. Was wide receiver 21 last year, 1,118 yards and four touchdowns. So uh, in a lot of ways, I mean, kind of felt like the Washington DJ Moore. Um, Not the touchdown total you hope for. Uh, Plenty of yardage. Looks great on the field, just like DJ Moore is a very explosive player when when you get the ball in his hands. So this year, entering season three, the leader of the wide receiver room, um, they added Curtis Samuel, but he's been out this this training camp and Mm -hmm. has a little bit different skill set. So... Now I look at the ADP and I say we're lower than the consensus with him at 11 and people drafting him at 10. I got him at nine. Ooh. I still I'm, I still believe. Look, in fantasy, sometimes um, you have to project what's going to change. You, you obviously cannot just look at what happened last year and say, well, Correct. this is how I'm going to draft players. That's um, why Christian McCaffrey is ranked like number 100. <laughs> Right, yeah, because he was injured all last year. He was no good. Um, and and the, the career path, the trajectory, and the talent of Terry McLaurin give me confidence um, in this ranking. There are some players I project to have a breakout, and I'm scared of it. Um, this isn't one of them. This is a player where I've never seen anything on the field uh, that he has done that makes me feel like he is not elite. Uh, I have seen plenty on the field when I've watched Terry McLaurin that says, yikes, eponymous, and it's called the quarterback play, not being able to hit him, not being able to, I mean, just airmailing him. Um, and now he's got, at, at the very least, a competent quarterback who can do wonders for fantasy options in, you know, in, in the wide receiver room. Uh, we've seen that with countless wide receivers, w- whether it was Tampa Bay or the New York Jets. Fitzmagic can get it done here with Terry McLaurin, and I think – the fact that he is such an alpha wide receiver here, mixed with his talent, mixed with finally having the quarterback and the age range and, and process to his career. You know, this, this is coming into year three, and he did break out last year. He was the wide receiver 21 and obviously dealt with a lot of garbage, including his own injuries. I, I think he steps it up, and I'm, I'm confident that he is a top 15 wide receiver. I have him at nine. And if you wanted to say, could he, you know, what's his ceiling to me? To me, I, I because I can see him easily being a 160 target type of player with that talent. The the ceiling is like a, a wide receiver five finish. Yeah, I'm I'm on Jason's side uh, with Terry. He's an incredible player, and the system is great. Like the volume will be there if you're worried about Washington being a you know ground and pound defensive team. That's not that's not the Turner offense. That's you, we saw it with Norv Turner with, with Rivera in Carolina, and now we see it with Scott Turner and Rivera in Washington. Last year, they had the number four overall defense, and they still had the eighth most pass attempts per game because even in a neutral game script, Scott Turner likes to dial up passes. And last year, even with all those attempts, they were 30th in target share to the wide receiver position because you had Alex Smith checking everything down. You had uh, – 
Dwayne Haskins and company over targeting Logan Thomas out there. But now you bring in Ryan Fitzpatrick, who last year had the fourth best adjusted completion percentage on deep throws. And Terry McLaurin can absolutely toast DBs and make them look foolish. Now you get a, a massive upgrade for at the quarterback for deep passes and someone who likes to over-target the wide receiver position. I think Terry McLaurin is, he's a to me, like Jason's talking about, he is a very safe breakout wide receiver. Number 12, Mike Evans. Mike and I have him at 11. Jason has him at 14. His average draft position is 13 right now, so we're right in that range. Um, we have Godwin ranked at 17. So this passing offense, I think we expect big things in Tampa, and Evans is just, uh, I guess, the best example of ho-hum, always great. Mm -hmm. I mean, 1,000 yards last year, 13 touchdowns. He's humongous, so he's one of those players that – projecting double digit touchdowns for is the right thing to do not the outlier type right. of season 109 targets um i think when all of their wide receivers are uninjured and playing to their talent evans is the best one of them uh, he offers the most he he's a deep threat he's a red zone threat he's a consistency uh option for brady in the middle of the field so you want a track record? How about seven years of 1,000 yards? It's absurd. Um, his seven-year average right now, so if you just take it all, it's 135 targets, 76 receptions, 1,100 yards, and 8.7 touchdowns. Top 12 receiver in five of seven years. That's why he's there. He's, he's just sneaking into the top 12, and that just I think that just comes from his ceiling's cut off by having talent around him. He's got Godwin, and he's got AJ or um, Antonio Brown. But uh, not a lot to frown he's, about. He's interesting, uh, like a victim of his own success uh, going in the fourth round it, for Mike Evans. Where last year, from week nine on, that's when the whole wide receiver crew was there. That's when Antonio Brown was there. Chris Godwin was back to health. And in that time, Mike Evans was seeing 21% of the targets. He was averaging just under 15 points per game, which on a – Per game basis, that would have been the wide receiver six. So everyone was there. We it's a small sample, and yeah, absolutely, things could change because you know we all know that promises get kind of crazy sometimes. But but Mike, <laughs> oh, the voice of public opinion. But yes, Mike Evans doesn't have upside. He can't. He's too too much competition for targets. I <laughs> do. I, you want me to repeat my argument? I, my, are you that what, was the yeah I, that's the consensus against Mike Evans is uh, just that he can't be the number one wide receiver and yeah, I think that he is, can't be yeah he can't be the number one wide receiver in fantasy no I agree oh overall and I think yeah okay that's fine I think Mike Evans is a phenomenal draft pick where, where what did you say he's being drafted as right now the wide receiver wide receiver 13 early fourth round okay so here's just going through this here's his fantasy finish on the season for his career 12 24 Wide receiver two, 18, 8, 12, 10. 8, 12, 10 is the last three years. He is today 27 years old. Like, there's really nothing not to love about Mike Evans other than, oh, no, he can't be the number one overall wide receiver in fantasy. Well, m almost everybody can't. Literally, almost everybody won't be. There's only one that gets to be the <laughs> yeah, number one. We, 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 we had it, Jason. Okay. We were tracking. All right. Um... <laughs> Okay, so seven years in the league, 28th this month. We expect big things from Brady. There has been boom-bust problems with Evans in the past. Goose weeks, disappearing. He can be unnecessary on a given week. The defense is good. You might have a big play from the other wide receivers. I do think consistency for all three Tampa Bay wide receivers is the problem from from a redraft perspective. Um you're going to have weeks where Godwin disappears. You're going to have weeks where Mike Evans disappears. And you're going to have weeks where Antonio Brown disappears. But they will be the minority. And something that we always talk about in the Truth of Wide Receiver series and that you just don't realize is that outside of like the top two wide receivers on the season, all of them have disappearing X. They all do. Even, even the, the target hogs on their team. So you're just going to have to deal with it. Number 13 is C.D. Lamb of the Dallas Cowboys. 
Mike and I have them at 15, Jason at 11. Oh. That is oh. aggressive. Oh. You know, but I get it. I, I, I brought them up on the Ice and Fire show as my fire pick. So a lot of arguments were made there as to why I believe ranking him that high is appropriate. 15 feels good to me with the risk assessment, with, with looking at, okay, yes, the upside is why you're drafting him because talent, ability, offense, volume, utilization, the fact he's getting out of the slot this year, the fact that it's year two, the fact that he was the wide receiver 20 as a rookie without Dak. These are all reasons why I think he's a more exciting and a better upside pick. You're trying to win your league, right? Like mm-hmm. You don't want to finish third. And while Amari Cooper is still a value in my opinion because his utilization will be high, CeeDee Lamb is a pick to win your league. And so um, I buy it. And 13 feels pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't love having him at wide receiver 11 just because it is scary, but uh, what you just outlined, Andy, I mean, he, the wide receiver 20 without Dak in his rookie year, he's going to step it up. He's used more in different formations. My big worry with drafting him right now is solely and only the health of Dak Prescott. That's it. Um, the health of sure. Amari Cooper doesn't really matter because you can argue that, oh, great, you know, if Amari Cooper uh, misses some of the season, then all the, all the better for CeeDee Lamb. It's just... Dak needs to be healthy to return on this. If Dak is out, um, especially without Andy Dalton now, that's going to be very, very scary. As of right now, everything is supposed to be fine. It's just a couple of weeks. They're waiting on Dak to just recover, rest and He's rest alone. He's been throwing a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's, so I don't think anybody's scared. Obviously, my ranking is not scared, but that to me is the path of failure. Outside of that, you might be disappointed if you draft him – uh, where he is, and he finishes as the wide receiver seventeen, but but you're you're going to be fine, and you can overcome that in fantasy. The only way that you're super disappointed to me is if Dak is is injured. Future of this team is Cooper and Lamb at the wide receiver position. Gallup's in the final year of his deal. Gallup will move on, and uh, barring, barring a shock, a shocking re-signing, he'll go be a number one somewhere else. I think he's got that ability. Lockett at 14, Tyler Lockett. Oh, baby. Uh, he's being drafted much lower than this. The wide receiver, 24. Matt Calf is ranked at 7. So I imagine all of us, the three of us, will get to draft Tyler Lockett whenever we want to in fantasy drafts. Last year was 100 for 10, 54, and 10. Um, that was a very Keenan Allen-esque season. Uh, managed to hit double-digit touchdowns because that just happens with Russell Wilson. Finished at wide receiver nine. The back half of the year was, what did we say? He locketed himself into your lineup in the first half and then melted you into a sad puddle over the second half because his bad games weren't, oh, well, you you didn't kill me. They were like, you didn't play football this week. Yes. So uh, despite finishing in the top 15 for three straight years, the question is more a value proposition of what do I want on my roster? What am I willing to endure at the fantasy wide receiver position? But his draft cost says he's your two. Yeah, that's that's the thing. is We're seeing that the end of year production is going to be uh, the wide receiver 14. That's where we have him consensus ranked. But he's being drafted as the wide receiver 24, which says that even if it comes inconsistently, it's going to be a value for you. When I'm in the fifth round, Wherever I am in the fifth round, I'm always upset if Tyler Lockett goes ahead of me because yeah, that's just such good value in the fifth. Uh, I don't see how he doesn't produce at least the wide receiver 24, which is where he's being drafted. I mean, that seems almost impossible. The volume was still there over the second half of the season, and that's what you need to uh, reassure yourself with. I mean, after the, the monstrous game against Arizona where he saw 20 targets – and 200 yards and three touchdowns. After that is when everything you know really imploded, but he was still seeing over seven targets a game in that time. And let me ask you guys a, a philosophical question. My favorite for, kind. For fantasy football. What happens to Tyler Lockett's ADP if you completely flip uh, the two halves? They, let's say he started last year 
with that uh, where it was the inconsistent games and he was it was crushing your your roster, and then he just the second half went absolutely nuclear and is winning people. Uh, he's actively in the in the lineup when you're winning. Oh yeah, I mean he would he would be drafted around the wide receiver fifteen instead of twenty four. No question, uh, but we've seen that with other players too, and it, it's a matter of wondering if there's a trend there. Um, I remember that happening with Adam Thielen in past years too, with the front and back half of the season game, and that caused people to doubt him. You yeah. know, in years past. So, but you're right. I mean, if he had finished that way, if the team had finished that way, we would certainly not have spent any of our offseason talking about the firing of Brian Schottenheimer and or the departure of Brian Schottenheimer and the change in the offense. And if you heard what Metcalf was talking about, about how the biggest change in the offense right now is that they're getting the ball out of Russell Wilson's hands quicker, um, more timing throws, short routes, like that sounds like it could very, very easily benefit Tyler Lockett to just yes. be peppered with some of those slants, get the ball out, protect Russell Wilson from getting sacked so much, and then uh, eventually let Tyler Lockett's speed take something to the house. It is interesting, though, because you can philosophically draft two very different receivers at his draft position. You could go Deontay Johnson sure. with his, uh, like, I don't know if I'd pick another wide receiver in football outside the top few that I'd guarantee 10 points from than Deontay Johnson every week just because as long as you're half or full, whereas Lockett might win you three weeks on the course of the year. So uh, let's move on. Julio Jones comes in at 15 overall. Um, last year beat up, finished at 16, the transition from Atlanta to Tennessee, right now being drafted in the fourth round. You guys are both – I'm going to give you the floor because I have him at 13. He is – And the consensus is 14 for not, – not for us, but for you know the, the fantasy community. Sure. That's where they're drafting him. You guys have him much lower. And this is the first wide receiver where – in our two shows where – I don't, Julio Jones. I mean, I don't even. It's hard to know really what to do. Like, what, what target volume will he see in Tennessee? You know, where he's used to being on a team with Matt Ryan, throwing the ball six hundred plus times every single season, and being the clear number one wide receiver on the team. Now, I, I'm not saying that the skills of Julio Jones have deteriorated. I think he's still a, a top level wide receiver. But this is a much different offense, and A.J. Brown is already established here it, it, as the number one wide receiver for Tennessee. Can Julio Jones really come in here and uh, see two top 12 wide receivers if, for the Tennessee Titans when that that passing pie is not 600 attempts for Ryan Tannehill? Because I, I, I certainly – they're going to pass more in Tennessee than they have in the past. That would be – foolish to to trade for someone like Julio Jones and say we're not going to adjust our offense at all but will they adjust it enough that that Julio Jones can really be a difference maker the the passing pie doesn't bother me at all because we we've talked about this we we talked about it a lot early in the offseason when we were going back and looking at all the success stories we realized like we really want guys that are part of a Two person target share, you know the sure. the 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 Thielen and Jefferson, the 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 Kelsey and Tyreek, like they just don't go somewhere else. And when I look at this team, when it looks at market share, it's it's AJ Brown and it's Julio Jones and uh, and uh, a bunch of crap. Like there's there's not a running back to throw the ball to. They, they don't have a pass catching Corey specialist. Corey Davis had a lot of work last year. Corey Davis had a lot of work. Uh, Jonu Smith had a lot of work. Uh, and there's not a tight end. If Ferkser, like he's not going to stop Julio from having his. So when I look at this offense, I think absolutely it can support Julio Jones. Julio's great. He's going to dominate if he's healthy. And that is starting to become more of a scare for me, if I'm being honest. That's what – He's old. You know, I've I've been anti AJ Green the last couple of years because once you get to a certain age and you're dealing with injuries, it's not as easy to recover. And we've talked about this with Julio. He is the most often mildly injured. He's always injured, always resting, and then gets back and plays. Except he only played nine games last year. Like he missed a, a large chunk of the season, and he's currently dealing with injuries. So I think when he's on the field, he's going to absolutely be great for fantasy. I do start worrying at this age. Um, and, and where you're drafting him and the, the, the young guns that are there, like, do you want 
to be left holding the bag. I mean, you could if he plays. There's some risk. If if he plays 17, like he's going to be the one of the best picks in fantasy. Do you do you feel like you would give Anthony Ferkser more targets if his last name wasn't Ferkser? Oh yeah, for sure. I, I mean, mean like oh, if it was no. if it was Laser Blade. A laser blade would be at least five you ever, targets a game. You ever shaved with a laser blade? Oh baby, smooth I, like a sea. Ferkser kind of sounds like a. Like you're letting the air out of a balloon or something. Yeah. Amari. <laughs> Amari <laughs> Cooper. <laughs> comes in at 16 on our consensus wide receiver rankings. We just talked about Lamb at 13. Last year, Cooper still had a great season, 92 for 1,105. Uh, if those touchdown totals rise with Dak, that's going to be a great value mm. in the late fourth round. And they will. And they will. Um, we hope so, yeah. We hope Dak is back in full. So in 29 career games with Dak, he's averaged eight targets, eight and a half targets and 80 receptions a game. He Receiving is, yards per game. What did I say? You said eh, he's averaged eight and a half targets and 80 receptions per game. Cool. Heck yeah. Okay. That's a lot of reception. Look, I'm game. just saying the math does not check no, out. No, no, I appreciate it. Thank you for uh, correcting that. Uh, not yet 27 years old. He is recovering from How a, is that possible? Well, he, I don't know. What? I, he was. Did he pause time? He was super young and Ridley was super old, I yes. think, coming out of mm -hmm. Alabama. So I don't think that they're very far apart in age, are they? I don't think so. Um. I believe did they play together? I think they were on the same team, but I don't know I if think they it were. Was really close. Yeah, Calvin Ridley's twenty six. Twenty six point seven. And that is the same. Wait, Ridley's twenty six point seven. Yeah, so just a couple months younger. Yeah, and they were. What a world! What a world we live in. So maybe all that early Amari Cooper criticism could have been due to still finishing puberty or something. Yeah, like studying for his his uh, driver's test. Yeah, or the ACT. Um, all right, so recovering from an injury, though, that is one thing that's happening with Amari Cooper this offseason. We know the offense is going to be great, but again, it's a matter of what's your team makeup. Are there? Let me ask you this, Jason, because you're, you're the highest on CeeDee Lamb in your rankings, but you've also spoken highly of Amari Cooper. I think that they are back-to-back -back in your rankings. They are. So does that mean that in various drafts you are making a strategic decision based on the rest of your team context between the two players, or are you taking Lamb every time? Um, no, I mean, I, well, right now, if I'm drafting today, it would be lamb. I, I'm doing that because of the, the injury to Cooper. I have both of these wide receivers as top 12 fantasy guys. They're 11 and 12. So I'm happy, thrilled, ecstatic to have either guy. Um, but if I'm staring them down today, it would be lamb that I would take because of the Cooper injury. Um, assuming Cooper gets back and is practicing before, fantasy drafts in late August, early September, um, then I would probably flip them because I do still believe that target volume-wise, Amari Cooper will be the one um, and it's, Lamb will be the two, but that's why I have them flipped right now. It, it, it goes back to what I said to me about um, Lamb, which is it's just the health of Dak. Dak needs to make sure he – and here's a great here's a great thing. Hard knocks, baby. Oh, that's true. We're going to get insight onto Dak and Cooper and Zeke and all of them soon because the Cowboys are on hard knocks. When does that start? Tonight. Tonight. What? I didn't I, even know that. I that's why you're bringing it no, up. No, not a sponsor. Should be a sponsor. Um, Heck yeah. Oh, I'm watching that. Uh, hey, Siri, remind <laughs> me tonight to watch hard knocks. I think Cooper is a great pick. He's less flashy, but he's a great, consistent pick. Um, Chris Godwin at 17. Jason's got him buried at 22. Oh, I love Chris Godwin. I really do. I When I looked at the rankings in preparation for this show, I saw our disparity, Andy. You've got him at 12. I've got him at 22. And so I assumed. I go, oh, that's because I've got Mike Evans 1. You must have Chris uh, Chris Godwin 1. and. And no, you you just have more total volume, I think, for the Buccaneers. I like Chris Godwin, but yes, I am very much lower Your at 22. Your actions say that you don't. Maybe there's 22 wide receivers I like, Mike. I 
picked Godwin for my bounce back uh, it, during the bounce back episode in early July. Last year was an injury laden season. I mean, he was the number two fantasy wide receiver. So you saw, every, and that was fourteen games, right? I mean, he missed the very end of a couple that years year. ago. Yeah, two years ago in twenty nineteen. Not Tom Brady, obviously, but Chris Godwin. That's the that's the skill ceiling for Godwin, right? Like he has the physical ability, the abil- the opportunity. Um, he can win at every level of the field. He can score touchdowns. I think Brady just didn't get enough Godwin on the field last year for us to see that connection. Because that was one of the question marks coming into the year was, you know, are we worried about Evans? Are we worried about Godwin? Is the is the James Winston throw the ball on every down passing offense with that leaving? Is there going to be a problem? There really wasn't a problem when Godwin was healthy. I mean, Brady's quarterback rating when targeting was 131.7, fifth highest in all of football. Um, his pace, if you omit injury, was 87 for 11, 20, and 9. He would have been the wide receiver 12 where I have him ranked, and I don't have a declining confidence in the Tampa offense. That's why he's ranked there for me. If you look at that split that I was mentioning for Mike Evans, when the you know when the trio was was there and Mike Evans was seeing 21 percent of the targets, Chris Godwin was actually third in the in the target share between Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and Antonio Brown, but he was the benefactor of of touchdowns. He was scoring 13.3 fantasy points per game in that time, which is more than Antonio Brown. But the so the concern for Godwin is. If he actually does become third on this target list of the three guys, and we're we're no we're not projecting that by by any means, but Antonio Brown, like in the realm of possibilities, Antonio Brown may still have it. We we haven't seen enough Antonio Brown similar to God, we haven't seen enough Godwin with Tom Brady, but you haven't seen enough Antonio Brown with Tom Brady either to know that Brown is for sure the number three guy on this team. So can Chris Godwin? get enough touchdown volume to to sustain for a little bit of lack of targets. DJ Moore at 18. I have gone through it with the Panthers recently. Yes. Thinking through this offense, thinking about the way that we talk um, and looked at the, like the Julio situation, right, where he comes in and infringes on A.J. Brown. I am, I am rising on DJ Moore. Oh, that's the, good to hear. The sun is setting a little bit for me on Robbie Anderson, but the headline to me that we need to remember from this offense in total is that they're adding a 115 catch wide receiver to the team. And I think that that gets buried when we give the the kind of, well, Teddy Bridgewater sustained three wide receivers. Well, sort of. Like the yardage totals weren't super high for all three. The touchdown totals weren't very high. That's still a question mark for Carolina. But I like DJ Moore this year. We we just have to remember they're adding Christian McCaffrey, who was a yes. like the total the the reception leader last year for the Carolina Panthers was ninety five receptions. You're bringing back somebody that had one hundred and fifteen, so that's just a very significant. And and Mike Davis had half of that for the record. Like when you look at him being involved in the passing game, it was half of Christian McCaffrey last year. So it is a very murky, interesting situation in Carolina. But I think I am coming around to DJ Moore because he gets his fantasy value on fewer total receptions and fewer total targets. Yep. He had almost 1,200 yards on just 66 receptions last year. So that whole value proposition of what if he hits six touchdowns, what if he hits eight, I feel like my odds are better with him. And so the Mike Davis, just to highlight it real quick, in the – games play you know like when when he actually really saw targets he was pacing out for 90 targets over 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 a 17 game season so definitely fewer than McCaffrey would seen uh have seen but Mike Davis was was certainly a part of the passing game and back to DJ Moore since entering the league like DJ Moore has played three years he has the 11th most receiving yards in that time he is third in yards per reception in that time like he is truly a great wide receiver. Uh, so in in the last three years, we have 15 wide. You res- have him the highest. I want to put yes. that out there. You have yes. him almost in your top 12 at 13, and I don't mind it. So 
in that time since DJ Moore has has been in the league, we have 15 wide receivers who are over 3,000 yards. The average touchdowns in that time would be 22 touchdowns, and that's that's averaging everybody the the lows and the highs. But DJ Moore is by far the lowest, 10 touchdowns. Like that's absurd to have the 11th most receiving yards since entering the league, third in yards per reception. So this is not a slot wide receiver just. You and know, a supreme athlete. Execute. Yes, it, it it doesn't make sense for you know him to sucks, be though? that low. What's and, and it, it it could just be no, I, the way things go. But I'm not. I'm betting for math and DJ Moore, the player. the The thing that sucks about the situation with DJ Moore is that you you genuinely don't know if he had a quarterback upgrade or downgrade. Mm-hmm. That's yes, a genuine certainly. question for the certainly. team, and that part sucks because. It's easy now to say, oh, boy, Sam Darnold represents a difference from Bridgewater. Oh, he's different. But it could be worse. Like right. that, that could really be the case. You could have a worse thrower of the football on that team. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the honest truth. When prognosticating about the Panthers, the most difficult aspect is Sam Darnold because uh, we've well established I, I really like Robbie Anderson. That takes nothing away from DJ Moore for me. Uh, all the arguments of the volume and the targets and all of that for Robbie minus the touchdowns exist for DJ Moore. He's the younger guy. He's the more athletic guy, uh, the bigger play, bigger, uh, you know, yards per reception. So um, I like DJ Moore and I'm not as concerned like the Christian McCaffrey 115 reception. I'm not outlandishly concerned over that in the sense that you know they didn't have Robbie Anderson that year it's a different year so so then are you projecting him not to catch that many passes right yeah well if you look at like the three games he played last year which super small sample but three games he was more of like a hundred target uh player versus 145 targets from uh, the year prior with a different coaching staff different regime and and no Robbie and Terrace Marshall Jr though, though we like the player he won't command the same amount of the offense that Curtis Samuel did. I, uh, let me make this prediction then, because I don't know who it is. You're going to be bummed out about like three players on Carolina. I think that that has to happen. There's not enough. Or, or you're going to be in love with Sam Darnold. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what a wacky world that would be. I mean, Ter- Terrace Marshall's worth a mention. Ian Thomas had 20 catches. They paid Dan Arnold to come in and catch more than 20 passes from the tight end position. 25. And then, no, he'll catch 40-plus. And then... 26. um, I will go to 26. And then Christian McCaffrey is a massively different... I mean, no matter what you say about where the volume is, you're bringing the number one receiver back. So if you had pretended that you have a wide receiver coming back, that's the number one, how does that trickle down um, the list? So we'll see. I mean, if you don't think that that McCaffrey is going to bring that level of of pass catching to the offense... Then you should feel fine putting Cook or Kamara ahead of him in your rankings. No, no, I I feel fine with Christian McCaffrey there, but I also I'm betting on DJ Moore. We are going to close it out with Robert Woods and Cooper Cup at 19 and 20, the tandem, the two main receiving weapons for the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, Robert Woods at 19 last year was 90 for 936 and six. Uh. I mean, the draft position right now is wide receiver 18 at 409. Cooper Cup's going around later, so I prefer Cooper Cup. Mind you, Jason mentioned on the show yesterday that generally the first guy that fantasy players take takes uh, or end up taking – Works out better. Are you that way with these two guys? Yeah. So that that uh, that research was more in the middle round guys versus the early round players. Um, so I'm not sure how that fares when you're talking about two guys that are uh, both pretty high draft picks. These I think middle rounds, fourth and fifth. Uh, yeah, I think the study was sixth and and on. Yeah, it but, was later. Um, gotcha. Uh, but when I look at those two guys, I do prefer right now uh, the value on Cup because I have them so similar in my rankings. Um, you're going to see more scrambling out of Matthew Stafford for sure because you saw none from Goff. Uh, and in those broken plays, uh, Cup is so good at finding the hole in his zone um, and just getting open down the field. I think he'll have some longer targets and uh, be a benefactor of that. Yeah, I'm going to take the guy who finished as the wide receiver four two years ago. So that ceiling plus a free round Which, in fantasy drafts. Yeah, I was going to say for the record, that was Cooper Cup. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm going with. 
just outside the top 20 for us. Kenny Galladay at 21, Deontay Johnson at 22, Thielen at 23, Claypool at 24. You can check out the Ultimate Draft Kit. You'll get all of the rankings from every position. You'll get them with tiers. You'll get them with uh, stat projections at ultimatedraftkit.com. Uh, we are where tomorrow, Brooks? Are we in running backs? Yes, sir. Man, running back rankings tomorrow. That's oh, going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, we want to take a moment as we close out the show, of course, to thank the sponsors that keep this show going. Uh, we want to thank Traeger Grills. Maybe your team, maybe maybe it wasn't looking so good because you weren't tuning in. You know, uh, last year maybe you weren't tuning in enough before the draft. Look, people make mistakes. But here, here, Mike, uh, let me remind you, your taste buds could be winning every single week. Yeah, mine won yesterday. Uh, when you fire up your Traeger Wood-Fired Grill on game day, because unlike reaching for a quarterback in the second round, which is uh, something we do not recommend, there's no risk when you're cooking on a Traeger. Set it, forget it, controls, maintain consistent temperatures to ensure perfect results every time and allow you to watch the game and not the grill. Why fire technology takes things a step further by letting you monitor your cooks, uh, everything you're cooking, your grill temperatures, browsing hundreds of wood-fired recipes. You can check those out on your phone. You don't even have to get off the couch to check your food. You can grill. You can smoke. You can bake. You can roast. You, you can braise. You do can it barbecue. <laughs> yes. Burgers, wings, briskets, brownies. Brownies. Have you done brownies on the grill? I have not. Uh, I need to. I would recommend it. Traeger grills are fueled by an all-natural hardwood pellet system that gives you real wood-fired flavor in every bite. So go ahead and lock up a Traeger grill. Put it into your lineup, Mike, by heading to Traeger.com slash footballers. Well, you're talking to the other people because I've I locked am, it up. I guess it's already – he's a star, I it's, locked it's part it up. of your starting lineup. So. Yes. And, of course, we want to thank Pristine Auction as well. Uh, hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. If that's something you're into, check them out. Use the code BALLERS, and you'll get a $10 credit. Wide receiver rankings are in the books. Running backs tomorrow. Going to be a fun show. Going to move Christian McCaffrey down? Nope. nope. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.